Okay, let's move on. Going deeper with convolutions. This is the ideas of Google Net. And we are gonna learn about inception. As you can see, this paper is also being written around the same time, 2014 and 15. At that time, they were not sure whether to use convolution, five by five convolutions or three by three convolutions or one by one convolutions or seven by seven convolutions. And the question is, which one, which one are you gonna use? Which one is better than the other? The paper said, let's use them all. So you use them all, you take your previous layer, you do a one by one convolution, and then you're gonna end up with a bunch of channels. I don't know, maybe 15 channels. Then you do a three by three convolution, you end up with 25 channels. You do a five by five convolution with a different number of filters and you end up with 50 channels. And at the same time, you do a three by three max pulling. And the idea is that just concatenate these across your channel dimension. And that's how you use it all. At the same time that you're doing one by one convolution, you're doing three by three and five by five. The cool thing is that the next layer is gonna combine all of these together. So this is the idea of the inception module. But what is the problem there with the naive version? Dimensions don't seem to match when you concatenate those filters. I think one by one, three by three and five by five are fine you can just concatenate them because you are doing it channel wise and the dimension of the input is gonna remain the same. I mean, the resolution of the input is gonna remain the same. The number of channels change. Even for max pooling, if the stride is one, you are not changing your resolution. Yeah. So that's fine. The resolution is the same and then you are concatenating a bunch of images on top of each other or next to each other. So that's fine. What's the problem? Yes, Jacob, that's a good point. It's gonna create a lot of channels when you concatenate. And uh, the problem is that these convolutions are not cheap operations. So at the same time, the paper wanted to go deep they wanted to increase the capacity of the network. At the same time, they wanted to care about the computational complexity. One way to decrease the, com the computational complexity is to reduce the dimension first. So you use a one by one convolution and you reduce the number of channels first. And then you do a convolution, three by three one. You reduce the dimension and then you do your convolution. In the end, the dimensions are gonna match and then you concatenate your filters. That one also works. There is no problem with that. It's just computationally more expensive than this one. And there are some results in the paper that show that this one is as good as the other one, but cheaper. I think we are one minute over time. If there are any questions, feel free to ask. If you want to leave, you are more than welcome to leave. Real quick, um, just going back to that data augmentation with the covariance matrix. Mm -hmm. So you take every single pixel, which is a three-dimensional vector, and you put all of those in a matrix, and then you make the covariance matrix from that matrix. And that's the covariance between each pixel. Is that correct? 
So let's go I think back. it's Yes, go ahead. I think it's the covariance between the RGB channels. I guess maybe I'm just like confused about uh, maybe I don't understand covariance as much as I thought I did. Um, but like if you had say an n by n matrix, if you wanted to find the covariance matrix, you would just multiply like A by A transpose, right? So yes, that's what you do. You multiply A by A transpose. That's actually your uh, second order moment, but let's just leave it that. You multiply your vector by its transpose. It's going to give you a three by three matrix. Is that correct? Yeah, and that's what I was but saying. Then you have to do a summation over that. Yeah. Your data and your pixels. So you do that for each pixel. The summation is going to be over x, y, which is your pixels, and your data points. What do you mean, and your data points? I bet your pixels were your data points. Or are you doing it across images? It has to be across images and across one image. Because it has to be consistent, whatever transformation that you're doing. It has to be consistent across a single image. And it has to be consistent across all of your images. So you, you, you iterate through every single image and then you iterate through every pixel and you do that vector multiplication to create a three by three matrix. And then you sum up across every single pixel and then every single image. Your iteration is actually your summation. So yes. Okay. You do your summation over your data point i. Basically, this is image 10. That's your i. Pixel, I don't know, 12 and pixel 13. i, x, and y, that's your summation. And then you multiply your vector by itself transpose. Okay. And in the end, you just have one three by three matrix. And exactly. that's what you find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for. Exactly. So then because it's just one matrix, one covariance matrix, everything is going to be consistent. And it's, it's adding the same eigenvector and eigenvalue everywhere. And essentially, it's like the average covariance of a pixel between channels. It is actually the average. It's okay. it's the covariance across your data okay. image. But okay. we are being a little bit sloppy here. It's not one vector times the other transpose. There is some mean that you have to subtract, etc. But mm -hmm. you get the idea. Yeah. Okay. And to compute the mean, you do the same thing. Yes. It's the mean of your pixels across the image and across the data. Mm -hmm. How do you compute the mean value of a pixel? I mean, you just sum up across all pixels and then divide by your number of pixels. Exactly. So you have to do the same thing with your covariance. There is a summation. There is a mean. OK. OK. Well, thank you. Yeah.